Spotlight is a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. It seeks to spotlight people, places, and events from around the Diocese of Youngstown that promote the new gospel of joy called for by Pope Francis. Your program host is Father James Corda. Hello and welcome to Spotlight. I'm Father Jim Corda. Today we're going to talk about the Parish Leader Program. And joining me in today's show is Pete Schaefer. Welcome to our show. Thank you. We know that, uh, Pete, you're involved with the lay ministry program, the evangelization program. Uh, these are important facets of our diocesan church. And out of that is the parish leader program that you are overseeing. But before we get into our actual discussion on that, let's talk about the diocesan pastoral plan, which kind of uh, uh, is the umbrella of all that we're doing. Yes, the diocesan pastoral plan came about two years ago after a broad consultation with priests and laity. And um, it was an, uh, a way to step back and take a look at ministry in our diocese, what we're doing well and ways that we can minister to people's needs better. So from that plan, there were seven areas that we've asked our parishes and our diocesan offices to take a look at to see what we can do a little bit better and what areas of strength that we have. And one of the seven areas that was called for in that plan was administration and more specifically looking at alternative forms of parish leadership. Let's now specifically talk about what a parish leader is, because I think many of the folks that are with us probably are very unfamiliar with that. We do want to preface it by saying that, that many of the dioceses around our country uh, have this in place. So it's nothing new in the church. So let's talk about what specifically is a program and why do we use the word parish leader? Yes, uh, a parish leader is the term that we're using in our diocese, and it is something that is going on in many dioceses around the United States. Each diocese tends to have their own terminology for it, mm -hmm. uh, but what it means is a deacon, a lay man or woman, or a religious man or woman who is specifically trained and then installed by the bishop to oversee the day-to-day -day activities of a parish that does not have a resident pastor. And then along with that, there is a canonical pastor and a sacramental minister that comes in uh, to oversee the ministry and also to provide for the sacramental celebrations for the parish. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the preparation that a parish leader goes through. It's not something that happens overnight. It's, it's a process. So let's talk about the process that they experienced and tell us a little bit about some of the people, uh, not necessarily by name, because we're gonna meet a few of them uh, within our show, but uh, some of uh, their backgrounds and what they bring uh, to the program. Yes, really their preparation is going back many years and many decades in some mm -hmm. cases. That The idea with the program is that we are selecting candidates that are already very strong in ministry, whether it be volunteer ministry for their parish or many paid professional ministers that have been uh, working for the church for many years. So we're bringing to the program people that are already well-versed in parish life, well-versed in ministry and reaching out to others uh, and, in, and knows what it means to really lay down one's life for the gospel. Mm -hmm. And so the candidates that we have, we have 14 of them in the program. Uh, we have six that are current deacons right now for the diocese. We have one religious woman, and then there are uh, three lay women and four lay men. And they come from a variety of backgrounds. They come from all over the diocese, which is nice. We have five of our six dioceses, or excuse me, five of our six counties in the diocese represented. Mm -hmm. There's about 13 different parishes that they come from. So there's a wide variety in that regard. And then in terms of their experience, it's varied as well. I think there's probably five or six that are uh, currently paid full-time ministers for the church. Uh, so they have that experience. There are many that are business owners. Uh, they come from city planning. They come from uh, the real estate world. So kind of some of these other skills that our parish leaders will need in order to run our parishes. And one part of the formation program that has been wonderful that I was not anticipating is how the participants learn from one another. They each have their specific mm -hmm. skill set, they each have their specific gifts and talents and experiences that they can bring the, to the discussions to ask the right questions and then to help share from their experience to, to help each other along. And so specifically what the formation program does is it puts them into contact with the diocesan and leaders of mm -hmm. the many different aspects of ministry within the diocese from finance and business to religious ed, Catholic schools, evangelization, 
everyone at the diocese that oversees these different areas so that they learn a little bit about what the office expects from the parishes, what support there is from the diocese in those areas, and most importantly, who to call when they need some more help. Let's uh, kind of walk through what basically a parish leader is going to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, because we're talking about uh, parishes that will not have a resident priest. So let's talk about what are some of the responsibilities that they might encounter on a daily basis. Really, the parish leader is the, the pastoral face of the parish. So uh, while this person is not expected to, to perform all the ministry that goes on in the parish, mm -hmm. they're the one that is kind of the point person to know who in the parish they can, they can count on to, um, to cover these different areas of ministry. Uh, so really the, the success of parish leader parishes, just like the success of all our parishes, is dependent on the fact that lay people are embracing their baptismal call to discipleship, embracing their baptismal call to ministry, and that they're looking into their hearts where God is calling them to serve. And then the parish leader is kind of the chief orchestrator of pulling together all these diverse gifts and talents in the body of Christ and setting them forth to, to serve. And of course, the priest is still an integral part of parish life. How does the priest uh, get involved in a parish with a parish leader? Yes, the priest is still a very integral part of, of parish life. Um, we're a sacramental church that's the lifeload of our communities. You know, we couldn't survive without the sacraments and without the ministry of the priests. Um, so what the parish leader option does is it allows the priest to focus on that ministry within the sacraments and other pastoral ministries that's, that we need our priests to do, um, but relieves the burden of, of everything else that, that is part of parish life. Uh, and so in talking to people from other dioceses and other priests that have experienced this in other places, um, the benefits is that they still have the, the connection of the community. If it's a retired priest and they're there on a regular, regular basis, they have that community connection. They're still doing the ministry um, and they don't have nearly as much stress anymore. So they're still an integral part of the community, especially because of the sacramental celebrations and, and helping out in other ways. Uh, it's just that they can take a step back from a lot of the other day-to-day -day things. And if there's something that a lot of us priests like is a stress-free life, so uh, anything to kind of relieve that uh, for us is certainly welcomed. Uh, it, we just have one minute left uh, before we um, welcome our next guest. And just in a nutshell, what is your hope for a parish leader? My hope for... Uh, our parish leader candidates is that they continue to be open to, to God's will in their life and to really truly discern where God might be calling them, um, whether it be to a parish leader position or to just continual uh, ministry and leadership within their own parish. And then once we do have the candidates into the parishes, uh, my hope is that they have the, the wisdom to know uh, when to ask for help and the, the wisdom to be able to discern which uh, which areas that they, they can empower others to do and, and which areas they continue to oversee themselves. Um, but in, in general, you know, that it's a, a shot in the arm, so to speak, for our diocese and a new sure. way to, to look at church and ministry. We're going to talk more about that in a moment. We're going to take a quick break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Whether it's passing on medicine, a blanket, or something as simple as a glass of water, that's how compassion works. And that's how Mary Knoll works, hand to hand to hand. For nearly a hundred years, Mary Knoll's been passing on your help to the priests and brothers working in 26 countries around the world. Mary Knoll, an American Catholic organization, dedicates 86 cents of every dollar donated to their programs, serving the world's poor and powerless. And that's how it works. Compassion flows from your hand to the hand of someone in need. Hand to hand to hand. That's Mary Knoll. 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 There is a place where a total stranger will give you their blood. A place where someone you never knew will save your child from drowning. Where a person who doesn't look like you, talk like you, or dress like you will give you shelter after a flood. That place is called America, where we look out for each other. 
When you help the American Red Cross, you help America. Welcome back to our show. We're talking about the Parish Leader Program, and we welcome back Pete Schaefer to our show, and also we introduce Patty Condello from St. Anthony All Saints Parish in Canton. Patty, pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. You're one of the 14 uh, people who are part of the Parish Leader Program and process that has been preparing for this uh, very important uh, position, I believe, in our diocesan church. So let's tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, some of the things that you've been involved with over the years in ministry in the church. Uh, for the past 10 years, I've been at St. Anthony All Saints. I started off as an RCIA coordinator mm -hmm. um, and then went into bereavement and pastoral care. Um, through that, my former pastor saw with inside of me something that I hadn't seen, mm -hmm. which is what we try to do is to see gifts in other people. Mm -hmm. So he urged me to uh, become a chaplain. And so I just completed, in fact, this past Monday, mm -hmm. um, uh, the CPE program, which is clinical pastoral education sure. uh, at the Cleveland Clinic. So I, it's a, it is being able to speak to the heart of people, to hear, mm -hmm. and to be able to really listen to what people are trying to say. Yeah, you know, it's it, it's interesting um, as you were talking, I, I kind of mentally w was thinking over the years, the many people that I've had a pleasure to work with in ministry who've been through similar experiences mm -hmm. and how over the years, as they get involved with ministry, that kind of like grows. So you get involved with one aspect of the church and then you discover that there's this other part that you'd like to learn more about. And in the process of the parish leader program, they kind of cover a whole gamut of ministries in the church. Would that be true? Yes, for sure. We try to cover every aspect of, of parish life, at least touch on it so they're aware of, of those aspects. But I think uh, Patty's story, as you said, it's kind of uh, true to all of us. Mm -hmm. That's uh, maybe we, we see one little area that we start to get involved with at, at our church or our parish, and maybe someone sees something in us that we don't know is there and helps that to grow. And sooner or later, we're working for the church for X number of years. Mm -hmm. um, but that's really the, the role of the parish leader then is to continue to have those feelers out and, and sights out to really spiritually look into people's hearts and their, and their lives to say, oh, you might be good at this. Maybe we can plug you in here and, and get you a little bit more involved using those gifts and talents for our parish. Sure. You know, in your experience, Patty, we can't do it all on our own. We right. need other people to help us. And uh, so as, as you uh, embark on this, this new ministry of parish leader, what would be some of the things that you would like to see happen within your own ministry, but also in the parish that you might be serving in? I, I think exactly what Pete said is that really it's trying to empower the laity. You know, I'm, I'm Catholic school raised uh, for the 12 years and came from an area that uh, an era that we really kind of thought the priest was supposed to do everything or the nun was supposed sure. to do everything mm -hmm. or they knew everything. But to help to empower the lay to be able to say, you know, you have a voice and you need to live your baptismal call mm -hmm. and to be able to come forward and say, I can do it. And it's scary. I, you know, when I first started RCIA, I thought, oh, good heavens. But wow, the light just came on. And to see that light in other people, mm -hmm. It was phenomenal, and so that's what really drew me in, and from what started off as a job became a ministry and a way of life. And I think, isn't that true? It's, you know, the, those of us who work in the church or for the church, uh, you know, sometimes we call it our job, but really it's, it's more of a ministry because unless it's a ministry, then it's really not the work of the church. Right, exactly. And so doing the work of the church is to be about ministry. And I, I like that uh, idea that you used about empowering mm -hmm. other people, especially the laity, because that really is the thrust of the Vatican Council, mm -hmm. you know, to empower the laity to understand that as people of God, it's just not the priest and the pope and the bishops and the nuns, mm -hmm. but it's all of us together working mm -hmm. as the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. What would be some of the, um, the other things that you, Pete, as kind of like the director of this, would like to encourage other folks that might be interested in ministry in the church to get involved with? 
I think uh, one of the strengths of our diocese is we have a lot of uh, formation programs to help people uh, mm -hmm. further their own faith. I think a lot of people are hesitant to get into ministry because they feel like they don't know enough or they, they don't know what to do, whether it be as a catechist or uh, mm -hmm. taking communion to the sick or anything like that. Uh, and through our parishes, there's a lot of great programs. Through our diocese, there's right. programs like the Lay Ministry Formation mm -hmm. Program uh, that helps people to kind of uh, explore their faith more on, on an adult level and to figure out how that translates into ministry in their own life. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of great catechist courses out there through the religious ed offices. Um, and basically ways that if there's that inkling of maybe I should be doing more, then we can help. We can provide the training, the support to, uh, to make you, help you to be successful in, in that situation. Sure. We've just got a few minutes left of our middle segment. I'd like to ask Patty, what would be some of the uh, things that you anticipate that you really are gonna look forward to do in uh, church, in ministry, as a parish leader? One of the things, it, it's a lovely segue because one of the things that I do within my own job right now is truly working one-on-one -on -one with people. And, I, and so I really look forward to that uh, as a parish minister to, and a parish leader to be able to continue to work and to, like, like Pete said, to enliven and to excite and to ignite uh, those other people to, um, to bring them into the different programs that we have mm -hmm. and to try to um, bring about as we continue to move the church forward. So I'm very much, uh, I'm a people person um, mm -hmm. and so I'm very much looking forward to continuing that. Let's talk uh, in our last few minutes about um, the, the maybe some of the anxieties or the fears that are out there because parish life is changing as we know it. It's not the same when I was first ordained over 38 years ago. It's going to be different down the road. So what can we do to encourage the folks to understand that uh, the change is okay? It's not going to be devastating. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, I, I think uh, the biggest fear is that people are afraid their, their parish is going to close. And uh, the parish leader option is, is one way that we can remain uh, having vibrant parishes with a, just a little bit different ministry and leadership model. Um, and also I think it helps to look into our history, that we are a history of mission churches, of people gathering together in a location to, to pray together and to request right. sacramental help. And usually that was on occasion, monthly maybe, uh, until finally the bishop was able to send a resident pastor. So we're kind of in the opposite mode of that. But the church continually changes and uh, what's important is the people of God uh, coming together as community and then the priests being part of that community and celebrating the sacraments with us. Well, Petty Candelo, uh, I hate to see you leave the set and have someone else come on. It was wonderful speaking with you. God bless you in your ministry, you so uh, in the work, uh, but also as we embark on this new uh, program of Parish Leader, we know that it's going to be uh, very fulfilling, not only for those participating in it, but also for the life of our local church. So thank you for being part of that. Thank you so thank much. You. You. Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. By the time we can walk, each of us yearns for the joy that comes from being able to do for ourselves. Church World Service believes that being self-reliant is a joy everyone should share. So around the block or around the world, share the joy. Church World Service. Their numbers are growing more and more, more than a year ago, more than a decade ago. More people now living in this state than nearly any state in the Union. One out of every eight people in America. One out of every ten families in America. One out of every six children in America. Thirty-three million Americans struggling just to remain standing. Thirty-three million Americans teetering on the brink of hunger sickness, hardship, uncertainty. 33 million Americans in these United States descending into poverty. And as their futures fall, so does our nations. Welcome back to our show. We're talking about the Parish Leader Program. And joining us again is Pete Schaefer. Welcome back. Thank you. And we welcome also Permanent Deacon Greg Wood from St. Peter's in Canton. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Nice to be here. We know that uh, uh, you are one of the 14 
members of the parish leader pilot program, I guess for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. uh, so we kind of would like to hear from you, uh, Deacon Greg, about some of what you've experienced in the program so far. And I'd like you to look at it at a different kind of slant. We had Patty Candela who was on earlier. Uh, you have had studies um, in preparation to become a, a deacon. How does it relate to what you're going through now with the parish leader program? Well, it's a, it's a kind of a completely different line. Um, it's focused more on the business and the everyday running of a parish. Mm -hmm. um, obviously the diaconate program focused a lot on the theology of the okay. church and the theology of, of our Lord. So it, it's a completely different viewpoint as to how to do it. Mm -hmm. It follows into, in a, in a general sense, as to making you more aware of everything that's going on in a parish. Um, but I think it's kind of, it highlights the specific needs of what an administrator has to do. Mm -hmm. An administrator has to do something significantly different than looking at the spiritual needs as the only thing. He has to look at, or she has to look at all of the other aspects. There's the lawn mode, there's the, you know, the building falling apart, all of the things that are the day-to-day -day that we do in our own homes, we also have to do in the parish, and that's basically what, you know, to, to learn these things, you know, is, is the important, I think, the important movement of this program. And Pete, talk about that whole administrative element that's really part of and the part and parcel of what the Parish Leader Program is. Um, be, even though I, I would like to think that the Parish Leader also needs to have their foot or one foot firmly grounded in the spiritual life of the, of the parish, but, but it's the administrative part that's so important and crucial because that is where uh, that leadership really takes its place. Yeah, it is a very important part of it because our parishes are, are huge organizations in terms of uh, how much is going on, the facilities that are there, the staff that is, uh, is ministering to other people. And so, you know, a primary task is to be able to make sure that things are running smoothly, that everyone is doing what they need to do, that things are being taken care of as they're supposed to. Um, but, and again, it's more than a business. It's, it's a spiritual community and so they do need to be grounded as well in the, the spiritual aspects and the theology to be able to come at all these different aspects um, from a, a faith perspective and not just a business perspective. Uh, Deacon Greg, if you could tell us how you would see your role as a parish leader uh, combining not only your, um, your ordained ministry but also your personal background in administration. Well, I, I fortunately, as a background, have a business background because I'm a pharmacist by, mm -hmm. by trade. Mm -hmm. um, so I ran businesses for 45 years. So it's not unusual to run a business and how that, that part of it is and the buying and the selling and the, how you keep everything balanced. Mm -hmm. um, I think having gone through the diaconate program and, and what the spiritual transformation I think that I had when I did that, um, kind of gives you the ability to withstand the day-to-day -day administrative problems that come up. You know, as the problems come up and they become overbearing, I have someone to go to to be able to get the kind of solace that you need to get through it. And I think that spiritual background allows you to do that. It also allows you to look at the people in the proper light as you are a guide for them. You know, we're trying to inspire laity to do more. Um, and probably one of the best ways to inspire them is to see an individual, be it a deacon, uh, a sister, a, a regular lay person in this position saying, I can do that stuff. Sure. And there's nothing special about him that I can't do. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want. We want the people to understand there's nothing special. All you have to do is get past that initial stage where this annoys me, this bothers me, I'm afraid to do this, I'm afraid mm -hmm. to do that. Once you pass it, you know, I tell everybody that when, when it's my turn to do homilies and I do the homilies, they say, how come you don't get nervous when you do the homilies? I say, well, I've been doing them now 10 years. But you don't get nervous because once you get past that stage of that initial fear, it's just like talking, like we're talking right now. Right. You know, and you're, you're just talking to somebody about it. And I think the same thing happens when they see, when the, hopefully, when the people see you running a parish, they'll see, you know, this is the day-to-day -day stuff. He's running it here. Maybe he could use a little help over here. Mm -hmm. A little call, hey, Greg, you need a little help doing this. Yeah, I could use a lot of help doing that. I think that kind of contact with a person may be easier for them to do it. I know sometimes mm -hmm. it's difficult for somebody to 
bring themselves to talk to a priest about something that isn't spiritual. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the, I can talk to the father, you know, about this and that is my problem, but I just want to talk to him about the fact that there's this big problem with the way the church looks. You right. know, we need to get this fixed up. Right. Um, you know, and I think it might be easier to talk to someone else about it. And maybe you can get mm -hmm. past that stage of saying, well, give us a little help with that. We can do it. Because if you think about it, we could do a lot of things in a lot of parishes if we just had the people say, I can help with that. That's a sure. piece of cake. We can do that stuff. And that's really what I think the biggest thing you will see as a positive from a parish leader will be maybe an inspiration to get two or three other parish leaders saying, I can, you know, that are out there to say, I can do that too. Mm -hmm. You know, just to kind of join in. You know. Right. And, and we really had talked about that before that it's n just not us, it's, it's we that work together. And unless we have that model of, of parish life, then it's really not a parish. You know, a parish is everyone in being involved. It's not just me coming to church on the weekend and putting my envelope in and getting my communion and going home. It's being involved in all aspects of, of parish life and ministry and enabling and empowering people to, to participate in that is probably going to be, as you had mentioned, one of the greatest uh, facets of the parish leader program. In, in light of, uh, in our few minutes that we have left, in light of um, the program and, and how it's going to uh, be part of our diocesan church, anything that you would like to share with the folks that are with us to kind of assuage any anxiety, as we had mentioned before, that you would like to encourage them to participate in or to get more involved in their own parish? I think moving forward, uh, one of the best things to remember is that this form of leadership has in fact happened in our diocese in a couple uh, notable instances. And in fact, right now there's two parishes that do not have resident pastors. Um, and from all indications from everyone I've talked to, it's been successful that people have taken more ownership of their parish, they've gotten more involved, they've been willing to help out more, as Greg was talking about. And once they get over that initial fear of, does this mean we're closing, that uh, things can and, and do go well for them. Uh, so that's, I think that's the, the first thing to get over that, that fear. Um, and also then the next thing is help, helping people to look into their hearts and really discern through prayer, through reading the scriptures, through talking to others, where do I fit into this? What, what tug do I feel in my heart? Mm -hmm. Where is God calling me to, to do a little bit more? And how might I reach out to, to get form more formation in that to, to help me feel more comfortable in it? Um, but that's that uh, kind of personal discernment and community discernment of where is this leading us as a church is important. Well, Pete Schaefer, Deacon Greg Wood, unfortunately we're out of time right now, but we want to thank you and support you in this parish leader program and certainly know of our prayers for the ministry of the folks that have encountered and engaged themselves uh, spiritually, administratively, and wholeheartedly in the program. And we certainly pray for a success and we know that the Lord will bless all of those involved uh, in our diocese of church. So thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Father. Thank you. And thank you for being with us. Have a good day and God be with you. Spotlight has been a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. Your program host was Father James Corda.